we are moving ahead for the first discussion of the day the title of which is state wise canal market outlook 2022 i want to request mr srivastava please come and be as a moderator at the same time i want to request mr m ramakrishnan t n c p e a can we have a huge applause for mr monish panda o c p a everybody please put hands together I want to request Mr. Rohit Zante, Goa Cashew Manufacturers Association. Mr. Urmil Rawal, Joint Secretary for Gujarat Cashew Processors Association. Mr. Vithar Roy, please put your hands together. Secretary, KCMA. Mr. Suresh Goelekar, President Maharashtra Cashew Manufacturers Association. Anuvar Uddin Ji, President Bengal Cashew Association. a representative from agra cashew association the idea of this session is uh, uh, cashew processing has expanded in recent times and uh, we have the presence of over 150 buyers here so it becomes like you know, important for us to understand where the processing is taking place what is the depth and diversity of these processing centers from the association present concerns so the way in which uh, we want to structure this is that we would have a 5 minutes presentation from each one of them they would talk about their state the raw cashew production the raw cashew which is imported the kernel which are processed the strength of the association and other activities the association is supporting the center so uh, we will start with a presentation from Mr. Ram Krishnan, he will talk about Tamil Nadu cashew processes and exporters association. May I request Mr. Madhusudan? On behalf of Odisha Cashew Processors Association, I welcome all the processors across the country, traders, importers, exporters, and media friends. If uh, I'm not wrong, and all the stakeholders in the Kaju sector. The buyer sellers meet is today organized, as you know, by Kaju Info to discuss various issues in the sector in a national level after it was badly affected by the pandemic years. I hope it will definitely boost the sector. So, on behalf of the Odisha Processor Association, I impart my special thanks to the organization of the Nobel effort. I would like to focus the same facts and figures of our Odisha Kaju, which will help the traders, importers, export to enhance the business in Odisha. We have presently nine zones, basing on the industries developed, depending on the local production of runners, mainly apart from Mayurbans, Kenjar, Angul, Arthagad, Puri, Ganjam, Gajpati, Jaipur, and Navarangpur. After the availability of the import nurse, the geography capacity and the number has been changed and provide ample of scopes for develop the Kaju business in our state. At present, we have 500 plus processing units across the state in different zones. In the processing about 150,000 metric ton per year. In the meantime, we are procuring 1 lakh metric ton of runners from our own state. So there is a huge gap of about 50,000 metric ton of runners which is imported from overseas. In terms of the import of our Orissa, is still a virgin and a very good potential for a high end business. In this context, I invite all the importers present here and let's invest in Orissa, which is averaging an aeronomous growth opportunity for the RCN importers. It can be appreciated that by this sector of business, we are able to generate 6 lakhs of mandates, mainly women workers in rural sector of Odisha, taking the socio-economic responsibility in the prospective areas. Our association is pursuing with the state government levels in the leadership of our president, Mr. Kedar Subudi, and facilitated Kaju plantations so that to improve the local runners' production. As a result, more entrepreneurs will come forward for the growth. In terms of Kaju kernels of Odisha, basically follow two types of grading procedures and 
supplying in the market as per the demand. It can be mentioned here that most of the traders prefer the Orissa Kaju kernel as it having a different aroma and the taste. Though we have organic Kajus in Orissa, but fail to get certification for the same, only merely about out of the 500 industries, only one or two, I think it's a Ma Kaju, will get the organic certification from Ganjam Zone. But uh, in other areas, we have failed to facilitate that organic part of uh, the Kaju kernels. And with the help of the government of India, we have a cluster, namely Sri Jagannath Kaju cluster, Ganjam district, which is successfully operated by the Council Journal Association. Right now, it is fully functional on the leadership of uh, Buluwau. It is uh, successfully run and functional. And also one more Kaju cluster have also been sanctioned by the government of India in Jaipur district under the president of uh, our uh, Jaipur Kaju Association, Mr. Penta Ramesh. In the view of uh, one lakh metric ton process Kaju kernels, we are still lacking to export our unique product but having very good grip in the domestic market. With our consistent effort and credibility, we create a handsome buyers across the country, but still it can be explored by the help of exporters and traders. So I invite all the colonels, traders, exporters to come to Odisha and stimulate the trade in more organized way for the expanding the export market of our Odisha culture. Thank you. Odisha, as per the association, processes 150,000 tons, 50,000 tons is in the whole One lakh is in the most produce. Thank you so much for the contribution. 500 processes. Quite a lot of numbers he has given, quite a lot of opportunities which he has shown. Thank you very much. May I now request Mr. Ramakrishnan to talk about what's happening in Tamil Nadu, casual processes, and exporters association. Good morning to all. First, I welcome you all here to the great event. I like to thank Cashew Info who have given the opportunities to me to hear. And I like to thank our association members. Because of them, I am here. I'm, I'm, I like to thank all our association members here. I think this is the right time. We are uniting here. We, have, we, are, we are having many issues that all our association are here. I like to thank Cash Info CEO to give this opportunity. Now I am here to tell about our Tamil Nadu Cash Exporter Associations and about the Panduti, how they are doing that. This association first we started in the name of earlier in 1952, Southern Cashew Manufacturing Associations, to, to encourage the processor and to give uh, more development to the farmers and for the exporters. And then, and then now, now we have started in the name of the Tamil Nadu Cashew Processor and the Exporter Associations. Now we have here the now new entities are in the associations. Now the new president uh, is Malarvasagam, and I am the secretary, and Mr. Selomani uh, is the treasurer. Here in uh, in Tamil Nadu. Uh, in Kadalu districts is the playing main role in the Rakesh nut productions. Almost uh, 30,000 hectares was planting Rakesh nuts. In Kadalu, Panduti is major role doing the processes. Almost more than 150,000 metric ton was importing and 40 to 50,000 metric ton uh, was local productions. In Inanda Road, Tamil Nadu, almost 1,500 small processors are there and more than 50 exporters and more than 2,000 small cottage units was there. You know, in Panduti and the other regions in, in our place, everyone is involved in cash use. Maybe sometimes they may be the farmer or sometimes their processor or maybe the exporters or maybe the uh, doing missionaries and or other workers. Because in our all four uh, taluka, all will be involved in the cashew. cashew. That is the special in the Panduti uh, sectors. Uh, in the report one showing that in 1942 itself, 
one would be having a separate name, separate name for the cashews. In 1942 itself, that time, that time not even the panduti is not familiar, but for the cashews, panduti is the uh, best uh, in, in India. Now, in, in terms of panduti, we having lot of in, improvement in the qualities. Now, we are a major role, we are supplying the domestic markets. And in the same time, we are concentrating in the export also. In Indian Darwin Panduti, there are more than 2 lakh women workers are working there. Mostly 85 percentage is women and balance is gents. Now we have to tell about our achievement, I mean the TNCPA achievement. We had applied for GI tax for Panduti cashews. For after a long time, uh, the application was in the process and hope we will get it soon. This is our great achievement we feel. Next, we had request our government uh, from the cashew apple have to make, instead of penny, we have to go for energy drink. And that is in the under approval of the government. They told they will be giving the uh, approval very soon. I like to thank the uh, Tamil Nadu government also here. And then, in the TNCPA, during our uh, GST time, whereas first time the GST was 12% for the cashews and 18% for the uh, roasted nuts. We, the association, taken these matters to the state and settlement with all other associations linked and we have fight for that and we reduced to 5%. This is the great achievement for our whole associations. Even and then we like to highlight that we had made two expo in our place. For that, where the small processor can see the machinery, everything. Everything they can, almost two, two, two crores machineries were sold in that time. That is main highlight for our local small processor, it helps a lot. And then we the association uh, participated in the Gulf food. I, I hope this is the first association which had went for Gulf food and in the same stall we had almost 10 exporters was there. This is the unity of our Panditian Export Association. And then, uh, in, in, uh, in our request, the government has planned to give a special cashew center in our area itself. I think in the village of name Kiragupam, they had sanctioned almost three crores for the special cashew sector. I like to thank our district collector for this in this uh, time. Cashew Day, we the association celebrating the National Cashew Day in the big way. I think this is the last year we celebrated the National Cashew Day, producing the large mosaic with the one ton of cashews, with the cashew pictures. That make a world record in the Asia Book of Asia Book of World Record. This, this is main highlights for our. I request in this time, I request all other associations to, to celebrate this National Cashew Days so that we can uh, promote our cashews in all other states, it will be the good opportunities that time we have to do it. I request all associations to do it. Now we are facing all of the issues you know. Now the very big issues is FSSA. I request, yesterday itself I told uh, to the all the president, after this meet, we have to jointly go and we have to fight and get our free clearance for the FSSA. So I request all the presidents to take this. Next, we having major issues for the exporter is, uh, even though we having 2.5% in the ROTTP scheme, but we, there is a cap value, almost uh, only we are getting 1% something. In, in the terms also, yesterday we met our Commerce Addition Secretary and we had given our presentation. And he, he told that he will do the best and will do it. These are the few of the achievements uh, our association had done. Still, we having many agenda for the new uh, improvements, we will do the best. And I request here, most of the seller and the, most of the buyer was here. In this time, I request the buyer, don't go for the specific origin of the cashew kernels while you buy it. Because, because, it's hurting, hurting. because there is a processing method. Even I can make IVC also good color. Some, some processor is not able to make benin also in good color. But while we instituting, this only the specific origin, benin, benin, or Tanzania or some other origin. 
it's definitely it it will be hiking the price for the particular regions it will be affect our the whole industry now once the nuts we are importing from all other countries comes into india it's the indian origin we prefer we do the good quality and we do the best thank you very much for this opportunity thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. the next uh, presentation uh, it's on goa cash manufacturer association rohit good morning everyone I am Rohit Zante, partner at Zante Cashews, and also the president of Goa Cashew Manufacturers Association. Uh, to begin with, uh, let's briefly look at the history of Goa Cashews. As you are all aware, that uh, the cashew sampling was brought into India by the Portuguese way back in the 16th century, and it was planted by the Portuguese in Goa, and from there it has spread across the rest of India. In the 16th century, people were not aware about the edible value of cashew, and there's a long history to it. And people became aware only in the uh, late 19th century. That's where the cottage industry started. Well, the first successful exports took place from Goa region in 1928. In 1970s, Goa started becoming one of the popular tourist destination within the country and attracted. Lot of international and affluent domestic tourists. That's the time when the Goan processors started marketing the Goan wonder nut to the tourists arriving in Goa. The tourists coming to the state appreciated the sweet taste and quality of Goan cashews, and the Goa brand was created. And over the period of last 50-60 years, the retail sales in Goa has grown multifold along with the booming economy. Well, Goa is a very small state. and if you compare the state of goa in terms of area maybe it will be equal to or smaller than districts of a bigger state like maharashtra or karnataka the total cashew crop in goa as per the directorate of agriculture is 24000 metric tons this year definitely the crop is short and it's still coming in but with the pre monsoon already starting we expect the crop to be around 60 to 65% in the end it's uh, known for its high quality quality as in the nut count uh, outturn ease of processing and definitely the sweet taste the goan farmers fetch the highest price in the world so current this year the highest peak was around 140 to 145 rupees for unripe cashews which is double that of what farm, farmers from africa earn the raw nut is mostly purchased in goa by the goan processors and few quantity is sold to processors from Maharashtra or Karnataka. Well, the processing in Goa started in the late 19th century or early 20th century, and it's more than 100 years Goa has been processing raw cashew. The industry is recognized by the Goa government as a heritage industry, and currently we have 25 members registered. The total processing capacity is 150 tons a day. Well, unfortunately, for the last 10 years, no new capacity on new new factories have set up in goa uh, thanks to the incentives of gst and wet refund offered by the maharashtra government on top we had factories closed down in goa the maharashtra border is very close so we had new factories opening up in maharashtra most of the cashew kernel uh, processed in goa is sold in goa if you ask me to give a number i'll say between 30 to 50% because uh, demand for kernel is very seasonal as per the tourist and the rest is sold in maharashtra which is predominantly pune bombay and the remaining 20 to 25% is exported mostly as certified organic well goa is a very small state as i mentioned before with a domestic local population of only 1.5 million or 15 lakhs which is half that of south bombay but we have another 8 million or 8 lakh tourists coming in to goa every year and because of the cashew market cashew goa and cashew being marketed to them for the last 50 years uh, goa buying goa cashew is like a souvenir you take it for your own consumption and also for gifting so the per capita purchase is very high in goa well the concentration of sales happens in majorly five cities and on the beach side pre covid we had no idea what is the local purchase but i think it's almost close to zero which uh, on the beach side and around 15% of the total sales in cities is done by the locals and the remaining is all done by tourists goa has more than 4000 registered hotels and guest houses it has 6 7 floating casinos and 
in more than 15 offshore casinos. And Goa is known as very popular with uh, betting destinations and conferences. So I think the demand from Horeca is going to be good in the coming months. But what we have seen is in the last two years, every time the waves subsided, you had uh, tourists flocking to Goa. So anyone who has travelled in the last uh, two years, there is a high probability they have been to Goa. And with the reopening of international tourism and also new destinations like Kashmir coming up, well, I read a report that more than 5 lakh or 7 lakh tourists are expected in Kashmir, Sri Lanka this year. That's a, quite a big number. We have to wait and watch uh, how the tourism pans out in Goa. Uh, Kardan market, total consumption, if you ask me to give a figure, it's going to be very difficult. But we had a small exercise, uh, very informal exercise done at uh, GCMA where we had a rough idea of the number of cash stores and tried to do, we knew the rent, what they paid and what was the break-even price we backtracked and calculated. I think on a very, very conservative and pessimistic figure, the total sales from retail to, this doesn't include Horeca, will be something like four and four and a half thousand tons a year. Well, lastly, I will just brief the activities done by GCMA. Goa, GCMA along with the uh, Department of Science and Technologies is in the advanced stage of applying for GI for Goa Cashews. A Goa Cashew Association, our association is working with uh, Goa government to, work, to come up with a subsidy on similar lines what is given by the Maharashtra government to Maharashtra processors so that we can revive cashew processing again in Goa. We often train, work very closely with our farmers uh, on cashew cultivation, post-harvesting methods and every year we supply thousands of cashew uh, high yield variety crops to the farmers. And unfortunately, in spite of Goa being a very small state, we rank 24th on EODB, uh, ease of doing business. So we are very closely working with uh, CII and Chamber of Commerce and Industries and help improve uh, the ranking of the state. Uh, that's all, any questions we have? Thank you, sir. I request Mr. Kurmin Rao, the Cash Processors Association, to summarize what's happening in Gujarat. Good morning, friends and colleagues. A, a warm welcome to all of you. And uh, uh, I would like to congratulate Event and Global, the entire team, to organize such an event. Uh, where you know the kind of the content what they have selected, the buyer seller meet the kind of the subject. So we will start with the you know, presentation. So everybody knows the once the name comes from the Gujarat is the industrial hub in India, but uh, cashew processing is very new subject in India and, and it has been started uh, from last one decade only. So Gujarat is a uh, growth engine of India. It's having the excellent infrastructure, you know, with the 42 ports and 17 domestic airports, including the three international airports. One lakh plus kilometer of well surface roads connecting to all the major cities and uh, trading centers of the world. The state has also, you know, uh, extensive road and railway network. If you see the new project upcoming is the DMIC, uh, Delhi Mumbai Freight Corridor. Uh, you know, one third project has been, you know, completely installed into the Gujarat only. So Gujarat with its all inclusive and sustainable and rapid growth is emerging as a globally preferred places to live in and to do the business. Gujarat is one also one of the biggest emerging market for the sale of cashew kernel in the uh, past few years. I would like to bring some advantages, uh, you know, what the uh, processors are getting in Gujarat. Gujarat is, you know, biggest market for dry fruits in India nowadays. Uh, delivery to customer is very fast and cost of logis logistic is very less. Buyer's query can be easily addressed in case of any dispute and in terms of, you know, quality and delivery because of the close proximity. Buyer can easily access your factory and, you know, whatever their expectations and gaps, you know, we can reduce that gap. Domestic buyer prefers uh, uh, as a Gujarat processor uh, for better understand, understood by processor and met the demand of quality and other terms. Gujarat processor are always ready to adopt best technologies and uh, at GCPA we have uh, run such activities, you know, where we are giving a lot of training programs uh, because it is an upcoming new industry in Gujarat. And anyway, Gujarat is very adaptive for the technology. So modern, all the plants are almost uh, highly modernized and highly automated. And mechanism is only the way for to increase the productivity and streamline the cost of production to become more competitive. This is what we have talked, largest cashew consumer. 
domestic consumption growing year on year. Uh, we have uh, studied with uh, you know our colleagues in uh, our association, and we uh, uh, found that uh, market uh, compound annual growth for cashew kernel consumption is 8% year on year in Gujarat state. Government support uh, uh, in terms of subsidies and kind of uh, facilities uh, is also in its in kind. Fantastic infrastructure, good markets for the, all the byproducts like CNSL, husk and everything, you know, you, you have the very strong market. Strong demand for the all the grades and uh, uh, getting, I think, so good price because of the, you know, we have the direct access with the buyers. So what activities we are running in uh, our GCPA, yeah. so we always keep guiding to our processor about the safety, manpower and qualities. So, you know, concern for the health and safety issue related to labor, environmental awareness. Currently, 50% uh, of the plant having their own rooftop solar. We also ask them to, you know, implement the rain harvesting water into the company. So. Uh, as the you know we, we have seen one presentation of any presentation so you know in that uh, we have the rain harvesting water system and then uh, solar system then we are using the biofuel that kind of you know guiding uh, we are keep guiding to a processor so we you know that way you know is carbon footprint advantage we can get the way forward uh, uh, if we have seen the consumption and demand of cashew has surged in recent few years and the consumer's perception of cashew nut has been shifted from luxury commodity to that of a health and necessity commodity. Successful execution of the vaccine program has reduced the risk of COVID-19 and life has become back to normalcy. And so is the demand from the consumer is now started gaining. There is a global trend that uh, uh, looks favorable at vegan and plant-based diets prioritizing alternative source of protein instead of those derived from animals and resulting in the soaring demand of nuts and nut infused food. That is why we have seen the lot of uh, uh, nowadays earlier cashew is used as a snacks only and nowadays is a nut infused products are demand is soaring. Expecting a normal business in various sectors like tourism, hotel, restaurant and catering or a segment with the return of festival and festivals in full swing even business of gifting and consuming dry food is expected to be to be good this year when compared to last year. This will also lead to good demand from sweet ice cream industry wholesaler and retailers compared to last year. 2022 looks very promising in terms of demand for cashew kernel. So these are the numbers of uh, Gujarat processor and consumption and demand. So we have currently 65 plus members registered in our association and uh, what we uh, have identified in our last AGM in financial year 2021-22 Gujarat processor has processed around 75,000 tons of uh, metric tons of material of RCN process and this year with the new upcoming projects are coming and, and the few expansion into the existing units the next year projection is 1 lakh metric ton of RCN process from the Gujarat same way, the kernel demand is, uh, as I told you, is growing 8% uh, CAGR year on year. If we see the kernel demand in 2021-22 is a 65,000 metric ton of kernel demand in Gujarat state only. This data we have taken from the, you know, we have the other uh, association in all mandis where the, you know, we have the dry fruit uh, different association. So uh, from that, you know, we, we take this figure and that market is growing year on year by 8%. So expecting to be around uh, 70,000 tons of uh, metric tons of requirement of kernel in the 2022. We have the domestic uh, production is less compared to you know what the demand in Gujarat. So currently what probably we are buying from the other state is uh, mentioned in the last uh, column. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Even from what you have presented, uh, it appears that Gujarat is a strong demand center and an emerging processing center. This is an emerging processing hub. As a processing volume, we are very less quantity uh, compared to other states and you know other associations. But uh, the way we are getting the new projects, uh, the, the you know is a kind of going for the family business. Like the one family member is putting up a plant of 16 tons. Now their three relatives are putting plant of the 20, 20 tons. So a lot of new projects are coming, and we are getting a very good response from the market also. That is the, you know, reaching to the market is very key point in, you know, the business and the buyers have the accessibility to our plants and the breach between the gap between the, you know, buyers and the processors that, you know, we are fulfilling while sitting in the Gujarat. That is the only benefit we are getting right now, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next presentation is from KCME. Uh, may I request Mr. Vittal Rai Kormer to talk about what's happening in Karnataka Cashew Manufacturers Association. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to stand here 
and brief you all about our association, its activities, its initiatives, and also briefly touch on our state's RCN processing, uh, RCN production, kernel processing, and import and export. Horeca to be around 50,000 metric ton. Horeca segment is the fastest growing segment in our state, and now the restaurants post-COVID is back to its uh, booming best. Moving on to export data, this year we have seen a drop in export, like uh, 2021 we had exported close to around 23,000 metric ton from Ma uh, New Mangal port. This year the figure says it is around 14,400 metric ton. There might not be that drop, uh, so much drop in uh, export. It, it is because of uh, container issues and like shipping line issues, like uh, most of the exporters from Karnataka have started to ship from Cochin port. Now when it comes to why Karnataka? Karnataka has become a hub for cashew industry. As I mentioned in previous slide, the, our imports are increasing. Karnataka imported close to around 4,29,000 metric ton. That is almost 40% of total imports. And demographically, it is well connected. Our members have taken mechanization in a big way. You can find the biggest factory in the world under single room in Karnataka. We, uh, because of all this, uh, now we are in talks with government of Karnataka to start a cashew policy for the state. And we all, the association should join hand together because uh, we are listening to uh, like African uh, countries are more focused on processing. Then export, uh, they, uh, they will be soon reducing the export or like few countries may ban export. So it is time for us to work together and increase our domestic raw cashew nut production. Thank you one and all. We invite uh, Sri Suresh Baudekarji to talk about Maharashtra, what's happening in that. Your association president Suresh Baudekar, I want to give him a good heart from the heart of my heart. I have been sitting with my president of all the state, all the state processors, and cashew corners buyers, वो सबको मैं धन्यवाद देना चाह रहा हूँ। वैसे तो महाराष्ट्र एक ऐतिहासिक इंडस्ट्री शुरू हुआ। 1904 में कैशुक को प्रोसेसिंग कैसा किया जाता है उसके ऊपर उसका प्रयोग किया गया। 1917 में वो प्रयोग सक्सेसफुल होके कैशुक प्रक्रिया यूनिट करके उसको लाइसेंस मिल गया। वो प्रोसेसिंग बहुत अच्छा हो गया। मुंबई मस्जिद मार्केट और कराची मार्केट चालू हो गया। बाद में कैशु रॉक कैशु कम गिरने के वजह से 1924 में मुंबासा से वेंगुरला सिंधुदुर्ग में 2,400 बोरी लाया गया जो पहला इंपोर्ट किया रॉक कैशु। बाद में 1926 में पहला वेंगुरला से अमेरिका में एक्सपोर्ट किया गया, लेकिन वो पहला फेल हुआ और बाद में 1927 से आज तक एक्सपोर्ट सभी दुनिया में चालू हुआ। वेंगुरला में जो 1917 में चालू हुआ, वो देश का इंडिया का पहला इंडस्ट्री है। बाद में वर्ल्ड वाइज रिक्वायरमेंट और कैशु में जो ग्रेड निकलता है, उसकी छानबीन करके 1938 में कैशु कैसा उसका ग्रेड होना चाहिए, उसका फाइनलाइज किया गया, वो आज भी सब ग्रेड सबको मान्य है। ये महाराष्ट्र का जो हिस्ट्री है, उसमें वेंगुरला रिसर्च सेंटर जो काजू के पौधे के ऊपर उन्होंने रिसर्च किया है, उनको ज्यादातर उ महत्व देना चाहिए। वेंगुरला रिसर्च सेंटर ने वेंगुरला एक से लेके वेंगुरला नाइन तक बहुत अच्छा पौधा तैयार किया जो इंडिया में सभी जगह अबे उसका प्लांटेशन हो रहा है। गए दो साल में करीबन 90 लाख वन करोड़ तक महाराष्ट्र में उसका पौधा लगाया गया है। आगे चलके महाराष्ट्र कैशियो एसोसिएशन भी फार्मर्स को बढ़ावा देते हैं, फ्री पौधे देते हैं और बढ़ाने के लिए, लगाने के लिए उसको प्रोत्साहन देते हैं। पांच साल पहले दो लाख पचास हजार मैट्रिक टन ऐसा एग्रीकल्चर का रिपोर्ट था, लेकिन अभी क्या हुआ? छोटा-छोटा प्रोसेसर है, करीबन 300 हमारे एसोसिएशन में रजिस्टर है, और करीबन 
अनरजिस्टर है वो उनका परचेसिंग ज़्यादा है और वो मार्केट में डायरेक्ट सेलिंग कर रहे हैं इसकी वजह से दो लाख पचास हज़ार से तीन लाख टन प्रोसेस महाराष्ट्र में होता है और बहुत बड़ा फार्मर्स उसको अच्छा गोवा की बराबर उसका रेट ले रहे हैं मैं इतना अच्छा काजू जो बन रहा है और एक्सपीरियंस से भी उसका टेस्ट बहुत बढ़िया है वेंगुल्ला कैशू इंडस्ट्री वेंगुल्ला कैशू रिसर्च सेंटर ने अभी अभी सभी कंट्री का काजू इंडिया के सभी डिस्ट्रिक्ट का काजू स्टेट का काजू लेके वो उसका सब टेस्टिंग किया रिसर्च किया तो वेंगुल्ला कैशू जो निकलता है उसका टेस्ट उसका कलर और उसका जो क्वालिटी है उसका बराबर किसी से नहीं होता है ये हमको गर्व से करना कहना पड़ेगा मैं उम्मीद करूंगा कि यहाँ दिल्ली में हम पहली एक्सपोर्ट किया पहला इंपोर्ट किया कि दिल्ली के मार्केट के लिए हम पहली दफ़ा यहाँ आ रहे हैं और महाराष्ट्र कैशू से हम कंबाइन एक ब्रोशर तैयार करके रखा है हमारे शॉप में आप अवश्य उसे भेज दें और महाराष्ट्र का जो काजू है उससे ज़्यादा संबंध रखे जो कि आगे सौ वर्ष तक उसका आपको टेस्ट लगे रहे जय हिंद जय महाराष्ट्र समराइज क्विकली व्हाट वी हैव सीन सो फार कर्नाटका फाइव लैक टन्स प्रोसेसिंग ओडिशा वन पॉइंट फाइव लैक टन्स तमिलनाडु टू लैक टन्स गोवा ट्वेंटी टन्स गुजरात सेवेंटी टन्स Maharashtra 2.5 lakh tons, West Bengal uh, from what I see in the West Bengal quantum meeting 1.4 lakh tons. Together this is 13.4 lakh tons. Uh, anybody in this hall from Andhra can support, uh, can give us some figures on what's happening in Andhra Pradesh. Around 3 lakh tons, sir. So there is some figure need to be reviewed, but this broadly like you know sums up what's the situation. Uh, going by like you know the processing. Uh, well, volume today, Karnataka stands first. Uh, going by uh, the raw cashew production, Maharashtra stands first. Uh, because I, I still like you know have some challenges like you know in accepting a number. I'm sorry like you know because this uh, number of three lakh tons what you said about Andhra looks to be a little on the higher side like you know, because we have never seen that number before. Uh, so that's that's one thing. And quickly some questions starting with Maharashtra. ये साल में आपका जो आर सी एन वॉट इज़ एवरेज प्राइस सर महाराष्ट्र का वैसे तो महाराष्ट्र में कभी कोविड के टाइम पे सौ के बराबर रहा बाद में इस साल स्टार्ट हुआ तो वन ट्वेंटी अभी लास्ट में वन फोर्टी थ्री फोर्टी फाइव तक चल रहा है वन फोर्टी थ्री रुपीज़ पर के जी इसका आउटर क्या होता है करीबन ट्वेंटी नाइन पॉइंट फाइव टू थर्टी थर्टी वन अच्छा ए प्राइस में कोई आर सी एस खरीदेगा उसका पैरिटी व्हाट प्राइस यू लुक एट कर्नल प्राइस महाराष्ट्र का जो कर्नस है उसका जो क्वालिटी निकलता है उसका टेस्ट है और तैयार करने का प्रोसीजर का ये है उसके हिसाब से सिक्स एटी टू के एवरेज रेट मिलना चाहिए डब्ल्यू थ्री ट्वेंटी नहीं सभी सभी ग्रेड एवरेज ऑल ग्रेड अच्छा थ्री ट्वेंटी का कितना होगा थ्री ट्वेंटी का आज के हिसाब से बम्बई मार्केट में हम सात सौ पच्चीस सात सौ बीस से थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर बेटल रॉक ओवर वॉट वॉज द सेलिंग प्राइस ऑफ रॉक एशूज लोकली लाइक नो ग्रोन प्लान रॉक एशूज दिस इज नाइन फाइव रुपीज को हंड्रेड एंड Uh, actually, uh, there's a good amount of crop coming out, uh, coming out right now, but uh, there's a heavy rain as you yeah, know, quality. and it is all all getting washed out. We yeah. can't dry it also. We, even if we procure, we can't dry. It. The range was 95 to 100. 95 was the least, and uh, it went up to 115, 117 degrees. Okay. And is there any like because you are also a largest importer? Yes. Do you see any connection between what is happening in the domestic market and what is the international price? I mean, like if you see an increase in international price, does it affect the domestic uh, uh, raw cashew price uh, in in Karnataka? Uh, difficult to say. It is difficult to say. Okay. Difficult to say. Thank you. Rohit, what was the price range this year in Goa? Yeah. So we started at 121, buying from farmers. Uh, unfortunately, the beginning price was fair, but the crop was delayed, and then there was news of shortage of crop. The weather was. 
very up and down this year, right? From the month of March, we get rains coming in March, April. Actually, right from for last 12 months, it has rained every day, every, once at least once in a month in Goa. So it has touched 140. Good crop was supposed to come last uh, in the next 10 days, but unfortunately, currently it is raining very heavily. So looks like the crop will be will go mixed. Sir, Tamil Nadu crop. Dry is what is the farmer is 100 to 105. It is a wet, wet carbon. Wet carbon. So, dry is come 10% more than So, after drying, like yeah, now, your price will be around 115 to 120 level. 150 to 120. Okay. Odisha. Uh, right now, 120 to 130. This is the quality. This is the quality. Quality is 20 to 100. So, uh, 50 LBS car right? or uh, uh, one month late man. or crop is 50% less. We don't have any crop in Gujarat right now, but uh, we have started uh, uh, cultivation and we have, we have so much focus in cultivation. So, we have the area uh, near Dang, it's a very forest area. So, with the type with the forest department, last year we have implanted around 10,000 plants and uh, give it some 2,000 plants to mango farmers also. So maybe every year we are keep doing this activity. So maybe in few years you will get some figures from Gujarat. Great, thank you. Uh, one question for you, uh, Urmil, like, you know, since you buy a lot from other states in terms of like, you know, kernels, uh, what is the preference of Gujarat when it comes to kernels? Like, you know, from which state Gujarat buys it? And what is the basis for buying? Uh, currently, a lot of material is coming, uh, you know, in, in Gujarat all the processors are buyers also. Because they don't have... Kernel buyers? All are buyers. See, all the processors, they have the very big market and they cannot process all the material in their factory because they have some certain set of limitations in their plant. So, they are buying from the other state. Uh, so, we are buying a lot of quantity from Panduti. Uh, we are also buying a good quantity from Mangalore also, depending on the client. Uh, and mixed material and uh, uh, if some premium client we buy from Mangalore also. Okay. And in terms of pricing, what you purchase, like you know, how is it like you know? You pay premium for some uh, yeah, yeah, material. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is that basis of that? Sir, like uh, premium means uh, you know the Mangalore grading uh, uh, and the most of the processes are in Mangalore. They are processing Benin and Tanzania. Okay, so for the rent, we are getting a very good quality material. So the, for that, we are giving them a premium also. Is there a premium for domestically grown material? Which one? Maharashtra material ke liye premium milta hai kya? Sir, we, we never tried to buy from Maharashtra, but if we will uh, now, we all, all are here, so we will interact with them. Okay. So this is a well established premium for Benin and Tanzania, or what you are saying. Yeah, yeah. But like that, in your market, is there a like, you know, differentiation for Maharashtra material or like you know, uh, Andhra material or Odisha material? Do you have like no, no, any no, preference? No, no, no. Currently, that? only uh, material is coming from uh, like most from Tamil Nadu and uh, uh, Mangalore only. So still, we have not explored the other state. Thank you. My questions are over. One or two questions quickly from. Yeah. What I found during these all these discussions, I'll make a little comment on it. First, in the entire country, India, we are having a cultivation of cashew around 10 lakh hectares, out of which three states are major producing states, cultivation and producing states. Number one is Maharashtra, number two is Andhra Pradesh, number three is Odisha. And all three states, with a minor variation of around 2 lakh hectares. That means 60% of the cultivation of the entire Indian cultivation, cattle plantation, is confined to three states. Out of this, unfortunately, Maharashtra is even better production, which is more than 1,000 kg per hectare, whereas Andhra Pradesh and Orissa still below 1,000, that is around 700 to 800 kg. And particularly this year, the crop over the entire country, what I have collected the data, it is around 40 to 50 percent only. So the future of this year's processing is a big question mark. And secondly, the way and Mr. Uh, our KCMA president, uh, sorry, representative, you have given the idea, and uh, particularly 
see the way African countries, origin countries, they are starting, started processing units in a very big way. It will be very difficult for our industry. So it is high time. We have to, within the same form of lands, this is the lock down. We have to increase the production because Vietnam is producing per hectare around 2,000 kg to 2,500 kg per hectare. Whereas the global production is around 900 kg. But if we come to India, it is around 700 to 800 kg. Still, we are lagging behind. Thank so you. within the limited land, at least we can, we have to pressurize the government of India to increase the production so to sustain the industry the future days to come. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Very valid point. I agree with you most of the times, except for the last one, telling the government of India, because it's not their problem alone, it's our problem also. Thank you very much for it. That's a very good suggestion. Uh, my name is Imanchu Kaushik from uh, W. Mehmet Private Limited. Uh, we are a small startup trying to understand the supply chain of raw cashews to Karnal. One thing we would like to understand that, uh, as rightly said, that Gujarat is buying from, from Mangalore and Panruti, whereas Goa is selling only in Goa and in uh, uh, Maharashtra. Uh, whereas Delhi and Jaipur buys uh, all the origins. So, uh, for a company who would like to create a consumer brand in the in the retailing section, what we should look at the pulse of Indian consumers as 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 cashew buying habits. I mean, I mean every every origin has different pricing, every origin has different RC and so can we make uh, uh, basmati tomorrow uh, out of cashews or not? Because we have seen thousands of brands in in cashew kernel, but we are not seen. One prominent brand uh, which can be Basmati or Kashu We will get uh, the Basmati, the special aroma of Kaju from its well, Odisha, particularly from uh, Jaipur, Koraput district. Also, we have uh, hill, hill type Kaju. You can try once. Thank you so much. Give them a big round of applause for a wonderful presentation on what's happening in different states in the Kashu system.